perhaps God has so ordered it in such a way that every generation has to grow up. Um, because if I could just get the answers right, give them to you, all you would have to do would be go look them up. And you wouldn't grow up yourself. I'm Mickey Maudlin from Harper One, talking with Tom Wright, who has a new book, How God Became King. Tom, you've had a fascinating history of spending many years in the university and then many years in the church, most lately as an active bishop. I was really intrigued in How God Became King about your argument that not only have uh, the church's teachings been uh, criticized by the skeptical scholars, but even in our defense by conservative scholars defending tradition, we've distorted uh, how we tell the story of Jesus and how we read the Bible. Um, can you explain how that works? Yeah, I think most Christians have actually, in the Western world, been uh, puzzled without even knowing that they're puzzled as to what the Gospels are really there for. The way that the modern age was asking its questions over the last 200 years has driven wedges between different bits of the New Testament which we really ought now to be able to say it's time to put that lot back together again. And when you do that it's explosive. A lot of Jesus' parables are told precisely in order to say, no, the kingdom isn't what you thought it was. The story the Gospels tell, which is how God became king, is one that I think the whole Western world has not only not wanted to hear, it's forgotten that that story was even out there in the first place. What parts of our story about Jesus are wrong? For a great many Christians in the Western tradition, the divinity of Jesus has been a major feature of their whole worldview. So here, here are these miracles. Wow, th this shows Jesus must have been the Son of God. Then you wait and say, wait a minute. When Matthew writes those miracle stories, Matthew knows perfectly well this is the sort of stuff Elijah and Elisha did. Does that mean Elijah and Elisha were the Son of God? Not in the same unique sense. Then the transfiguration. But hang on, Moses and Elijah, again, are transfigured with Jesus. So th does that make them the second person of the Trinity? Of course not. And it is that whole framework that I think if Jesus were to see, he would say, sorry guys, you just missed the point. I'm talking about God becoming king. And that means God is running the show. And however you're going to do your politics and society, if you're a Christian, you ought to do it in such a way as to find a system which acknowledges the sovereignty of God, even though then how that works out is gonna be very tricky.